everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and I have a kit review for you today. And uh, yes, I still have my cold a bit, so I may get a little bit of croakiness in there, but sorry about that. Um, so this is the Qatari first release. This is the Spitfire Mark 1A mid, as you can see. And this was released um, early last year. I thought it was actually 2022, uh, but, it, it, but it wasn't. It was 2023. Hence, they became my number one for engineering and number one for instructions in my end of year, my opinion, kit roundup. So um very, very pleased to see that Qatari have got me on their um, reviewers list and they have actually sent me this one now. Uh, so this is their latest release. There is a Mark V on the way. And as a lot of you will know, there is a BF 109 on the way as well. Now, Qatari, as I say, fairly new company, but this is really only their third release. Um, their first release was obviously this one. This was the Spitfire Mark 1A. And then they had the, the second release, which basically the same kit, but with a, a resin figure. Um, as far as I'm aware, I haven't seen the kit, so I can't swear by that. But I think it's, it's that same kit with a resin figure. Now, Qatari, um, fairly new company, as I say, um, based in New Zealand. A lot of you will have heard of and know and love Wingnut Wings. Um, we all know and love Wingnut Wings. And when Wingnut Wings cease to exist kind of thing, it's difficult to say because Wingnut Wings have not actually gone bust. Wingnut Wings still exists as a company. They still have a website which is up and running. Um, they could come back to making kits, I guess, like that, you know, with, with, with the staff or whatever. I don't know. But um, Wingnut Wings have not gone bust. They haven't gone. They're still out there. Go check the website. It's still there. Um, but the employees obviously were, were laid off set aside whatever however you want to put it and some of those employees got together and formed Qatari uh, the main man being Richard Alexander who was who's now manager director he was a I can't remember what position he was at Wingnut Wings but he was up there big time and um, regularly speak to Richard via email and stuff on all things aircraft research related and everything and Richard has also put out some books he's done with Wing Leader he's done the um the Lancaster book number five, the Wing Leader Photo Archive number five, which I believe is the best resource out there for early Lancasters. It's just amazing. Um, he's also then done this one here recently. This is very recent. This was late last year with um, with Wing Leader. This is number 26. And as you can see, Richard Alexander here. And this is um, the Spitfire Mark One Two Special Edition. This, and this book is pretty much made with modelers in mind. And what he's done here is picked up on all the bits and pieces that other companies have got wrong or, or you know, sort of bent over to the waltz of modelers and stuff, which we'll cover more in a minute. And um, it's an absolutely fantastic book. And if you do want to build one of these or one of these or any of the Spitfires from Qatari, then I would thoroughly recommend this book. I would also recommend this one, number five. Um, sorry, number one, number five on the brain. Number one, Spitfire Mark One. Um, fantastic book, uh, 1936 to the Battle of Britain. So you can see, if you go back and have a look, I've reviewed this book, but it goes all the way from the first ever prototype Spitfires, and it takes you all the way up to the um, to the Mark IIs. So very, very sorry, just the Mark Ones. It takes you up to the Battle of Britain. Sorry, I was looking at this one's the Mark IIs. Um, it takes you all the way up to the Battle of Britain, and it gives you lots of little. It's little bits like this that are really, really helpful if you're after accuracy. You know about the uh, the rod there on the door, the armor plating, the gun sight, and all these little bits and pieces that you may not pick out in photos, but it's the sort of thing that you know Richard will pick up some photographs and he'll spot that there's one more rivet on that canopy than on normal. So, you know what what defined that sort of thing, and that's where he goes. And it's absolutely great uh, when they get together and make books like this. So all of the Wing Leader Archive books are absolutely fantastic. I've reviewed them all. Have a look. I've, there will be a new one coming very soon. I think it's another typhoon um, and there's also another one on the cards as well for the Lancaster which is going to be um, really interesting I'm hoping to uh, to um, get that one as soon as I can so um, this is the Spitfire Mark 1 early by Qatari I've got 155 parts 28.5 centimeter length and a 35 centimeter wingspan so it's not that big a model. It's a nice size, you know, 30 second scale is great for single engine World War II fighters and all your biplanes and everything. It's a great scale, not too big, not too small. I find 70 second scale for this kind of thing 
too small because they are very very small aircraft so beautiful um beautiful artwork again done by Daryl Legg he's their resident um their resident artist guy he does all their artwork for them and you can see a beautiful mark one there um and you've got you've got one here with the aluminium undersides and everything and this one has also got the aluminium undersides so looking around the box you can see we've got some words there so if i hold that there you can freeze frame and you can have a read should you want to and then we've got the three options here offered in the box so we've got two mark ones and we've got a mark 1a so basically that model there is going to be dare i say the same as what you build from this box here so if you've got this kit and you've got this kit and you don't want to build any of them you could probably build this kit, or you could build this kit with those decals so you have that option okay you also have the um the one man army mask set for this model so if you're going to do that one uh, then no doubt you could use your spare one man army masks on that one but so obviously it doesn't have these these earlier type wrangles and everything so um I say earlier that's actually later he obviously went back to it um so I'm in the box once again we're confronted individually bagged sprues and you can see if you're familiar with the mark one kit then this is a massive clear sprue the, the mark one sorry the mark two the mark one a <laughs> mid should I say we're getting confused here is only that sprue there Okay, so with well that sprue there so with this one you're getting this additional piece as well so um that's all very nice um and then we've got this additional sprue here which is sprue f so this is mark one early so you can see the three two zero well, actually you can get, get the light on now because we've got rid of the the box we'll get light off in a minute again so you can see here we've got the two the two blade propeller we've got the early instrument panel we've got the uncovered fuel tank the non-trimmed um engine covers we've got the spine there without the fairing around the antenna and we've got the door here with the pull ring rather than the um rather than the latch mechanism and also we've got the early exhausts on there and then you've got the twin pito you've got the fillers there for wings antenna all very very complete everything out of the box and you will also notice with this if you haven't seen a qatari kit before they're fairly simple in their design um you know, like a lot of manufacturers these days they want to give you 27 sheets of photo etch and 498 parts you know that is not what Qatari is about Qatari is about giving you a model kit that is absolutely accurate to the you know to the nth degree and doesn't give you loads and loads of peppered rivet detail everywhere and everything because that that's not what it is it's what modelers may want i mean you look at a, a, a trumpeter 132nd scale dauntless beautiful kit one of their best absolutely covered in rivets they were actually covered in raised rivets so you know um it's kind of what modelers want against what modelers should have really um and you can see here this is something i love again with the lancaster which is x-wing at wings so you can see where the where this is all coming from you have this interior panel here which is and we'll look at this out of the bags in a minute but it's all one piece rather than being made out of separate parts and i love it it's great all you do like i've said on countless occasions the starboard side of the cockpit of the lancaster is one piece of plastic you add the seat for the um for the flight engineer that's it the rest of it is just one piece of plastic and it's all molded in one and all it takes is some painting and it's great uh, we've got additional parts here they're apologizing for some dodgy molding um, and they are to replace those parts there but again we'll look at that we've got some uh, the wings there which are absolutely beautiful more on those in a minute fuselage halves again more on those in a minute we'll have a look at all this in a second and then here as you can see and if you know the kit well you will recognize straight away that this is basically this is the mark 1a or the mark 1 yeah, the mark 1a i'm getting myself confused here this is basically this kit with some extra sprues so um and then you've got a beautiful decal sheet there so we'll have a look at the instructions as we normally do so we'll get the light off again um because it just reflects off the paper so there if i can hold that up you can freeze frame and have a good old read should you want to i'm sure you can download these on um on scale mates 
and then you've got some specifications there at the bottom. You can read all that should you want to as well. So going into the manual, we start off as usual with health and safety and everything. It's going to be telling you, you know, not to stab your dog and don't go putting your feet into whatever. Um, and then you've got here, you've got all your different um, symbols for your instructions. So familiarise yourselves with them, don't go missing stuff out. And then here we've got beautifully done, just how they used to be in the old days. You've got all the colours down here um, with a sort of description of what the colour is. Ravel. You know, not like silky matte grey. What's that? You know, this is actual, you know, colours. And then here we've got Tamiya, Humbrol, and then we've got the FS, and the uh, Federal Standard and British Standard colours there, which is really good as well, because they're easy to cross-reference for all your different paint manufacturers. But they've used two very common paint manufacturers here, Tamiya and Humbrol, and uh, I generally use Tamiya where I can. What's interesting here... Uh, they got interior grey green semi glosses XF seventy one, XF seventy one isn't semi gloss it's uh, it's flat, and also I believe XF seventy one is correct for grey green. I personally think interior grey green is a lighter colour. That is my personal opinion, and I will not argue about it. <laughs> okay, um, but superine interior green semi gloss is XF seventy one and X twenty eight. And X28, I think, is part green, isn't it? Yes, X28 is like a, a bright green. So um, the Supermarine was more like an apple green. It's the same in the Mark 1A. Uh, you've got this different colour green. So bear that in mind. It's not just XF71 and it's not the lighter green like you would have found in, in Lancaster's or later Spitfires or whatever. Remember, this is like a, a pre-war colour almost. Um, and then all the other colours down here with the proper mixes and everything. So that's really, really nice. Um, apply clear varnish to achieve the desired gloss, semi-gloss and matte finish. So there you go. So they're telling you to use XF71 there. But here they're telling you use a semi-gloss varnish because the paints were semi-gloss. So over here we got our sprue layouts and our decals. Decals wherever you are in the world. <clears throat> and here they're showing you parts not used. So obviously we've got two three-bladed propellers in here. And we've got one two-bladed propeller. One of them we're not going to use, and another one you're not going to use, depending on whatever you... So you're going to have some good stuff in the spares box. You've got the later instrument panel there. You've got the later spinner, um, later spinner and prop there that you're not going to use. You've got the later spine there with the fairing around the antenna you're not going to use. Um, and then there's some little bits and pieces, some doors you're not going to use. So you have parts in your spare bin, or if you messed them up in your Mark 1A, you've got them in here. And then you've got, you'll have lots of clear parts left over because you're only going to use one of those canopies and uh, I'm just looking there now it looks like oh no it looks like the, I thought there was more on here than you got there but um, it's just that looks a lot simpler than the actual sprue and then we've got the beautiful decal sheet here and then this sprue F is what you've got with all your extra bits and pieces on so going straight into the instructions looking very very uh, we know who they look like um, Fantastic, beautiful paint guide as usual. Can you imagine if that Lancaster had come from Wingnut Wings? What the instrument panel, what the um, instruction manual would have been like? It would have been absolutely stunning. So here you can see you've got all the colour callouts, all beautifully dis displayed, all clearly marked out. Clearly marked out where all your individual decals are going to go for your instrument panel. And then we've got an image here of the real thing. So you know. This ain't no border model instruction manual, guys. This is the this is the business. This is one of the best manuals you'll ever see. Um, so there we go. So we got that there, and then we got the instrument panel and this uh, cross member here going in. Then we're going to build the rudder mechanism. Very very typical Spitfire assembly. Rudder pedals going onto the end of those actuators there, and then we've got the actual um, control column. Also, no, every single part has a name. OK, so that's gun heating decks, what I call a cross member. Um, I mean, every single part has got a name. So you can learn from this as well as just build a model. You're going to learn what parts are called and what they all are, which is really handy when it comes to, you know, instruments and stuff like that, where you, where you don't know what they are. Um, so, again, you can see here like this, this box here, that's all molded in with the floor. So um, it's, it's the battery. So really, really good. They call it an accumulator. Okay, that's interesting. So 
World War II's torque, it was an accumulator, but it's actually a battery. I can see what it was called an accumulator. So column, uh, control column going in here, elevator control rod and lever part going on there. That's the part that's missing from the Airfix 124th kit. It actually has the location on the lever and the, on the column, and it has a location under the seat <clears throat> for it to go in, but there is no, I don't know how they missed it, but they, but they did. Um, two choices of seats here, same as like with the Lancaster. You have a seat with moulded in harnesses, which I absolutely love. I think it looks amazing. Uh, if you go and look at my Lancaster seat, you'll see it looks it looks beautiful. Just get some shading in there, get some washers in there, and the belts actually look real and they look lovely. Um, they really do look good. So you can either use aftermarket belts or you can use that seat there. You need to cut the harness and take a one millimeter section out of it to get it to go through the bulkhead there. Uh, we've got the armor plate on here. So this is only from after May 1940. You might want to thin the edges out on that, depending what they're like on the actual kit. And then you've got the armor plate here for the head um, from May 1940. And here you've got the, uh, the yellow spot on there. That is actually to identify armor plate. Um, and then they're suggesting if you want to, you can drill out these holes for more detail. Somebody was making a fuss about this, how you couldn't do it, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And it's not very well designed and this, that and the other. And then you see somebody else and they look at what I've done. I drilled out the holes and doesn't it look lovely. So I can't see a problem with drilling those holes out myself. Um, so that's all very, very nice indeed. And then we've got the, you can drill out some holes here if you want to add more detail. So that's really nice. Uh, so you can add more detail to there. I would definitely do that. They'll look great. And then you've got a rig. You've got this um, flare chutes going in, and then you've got the the seat belts going in there with the actuator there, which is pulling on the back of the belt. So that's like a, a cable system there. And then here you've got your green, your blue, and your red. The only reason they're different colours is to so you get to see where they're going in here. And then you've got this moulded on block on the back of this flare chute here that actually. Um, captures all these, 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 you can pull these cables tight and just put a drop of super glue in there and that holds them all. So you've got all this in the base of your cockpit. All looking really good when you look in the windows. Um, <clears throat> and then here we've got a painting guide. Again, look at it. What more could you want? How beautiful is that? It's color, it's um, the correct colors. It's clear, it's concise. It's absolutely brilliant. And here we've got more decor placements for all your bits and pieces. So um, absolutely beautifully done. You know, it's really kind of no aftermarket required, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, aftermarket, if, if you start putting 3D bits and pieces in there, it's probably going to look better. But how much better is the question you have to ask yourself. So here we've got more uh, more rigging going in and we've got an undercarriage hand pump going in the side there. And then we've got um, spare filaments. So they obviously didn't have spare filaments for the GM2 reflector sites. In the earlier version so it wasn't until um, the Mark 1A came along that they had those uh, signaling switch box that one is and then here we've got the, the uh, side going into the cockpit and the other side going on and here you've got some genuine photographs and here we are talking now about, about um, uh, standard top cowlings um, Few, note the fuse, fuselage fuel tank and wing are finished in the B camouflage scheme but the cowlings are in the A scheme OK, I um, hadn't noticed that. This is the sort of thing I'm talking about. I wouldn't notice that in a million years, but Richard's picked up like that. Um, uh, and even they don't match each other well. Also note the weld lines and construction of the earlier style, a triple ejector nozzle, outlet exhaust manifolds, the camouflage demarcation line on the oil tank and fairings and the poor fit of the cowlings. Something else that um, is covered well in this kit, you will have purposely fitting you will have purposely poor fitting parts because on the real aircraft they were poorly fitted. So don't be tempted to start getting your missile surface around filling in seams and stuff where there's a removable panel because as you can see here they didn't fit perfectly. They they weren't designed like that. It was a war machine. It was designed to go and do a job. It wasn't designed to be all sleek and slender and beautiful which is why you have to be very very careful with restored aircraft as references. I keep saying this and people keep saying, have you seen the Haynes manual for this? It's brilliant. Have you seen this such and such at Hendon? No, don't look at it. It's restored. It's all restored. Look at genuine pictures. OK, look at genuine photographs and also avoid drawings unless you know they're If you absolutely know they're good, then go with them. Or if there's no other source, then go with them. But uh, 
you have to ask yourself, if you were trying and trying and trying to find a source, the person that did the drawing, where did they get their information from? That's what you have to ask yourself. Anyway, on with the build, I'll stop waffling. So we've got more uh, rigging material going in here, into the side there. And then you've got these little ledges, which you remove for the closed door display option. So really nice that they've actually added these little flanges in here for accuracy if you're having the door open. But if you're having your door um, closed, then they'll get in the way. So you just cut them off and glue your door in. So really, really nice they've done that. Airfix do a similar thing on their canopies as well, which is nice. Um, and then you've got a flush riveted accumulator door. It's another battery. Um, and then you've got the engine cowling. So you've got engine cowling trimmed, which is just slightly shorter than the long one. So when they actually fitted the armour plate, which you're going to see in a minute to the fuel tank, then they had the trimmed cowlings. Um, hydraulic reservoir for undercarriage hand pump. You can see everything has got a name. Showing you exactly where all these parts go. And it's really, really nice. Uh, wireless remote contactor IFF Pipsqueak installed by January 1940 and height and airspeed consumer computer installed by May 1940. Bloody hell. The, the information is just incredible. Um, you know, it's not just one, two, three, four, and then you find that it's all wrong. <laughs> it's three, four, two, one. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Don't forget to put your uh, upward facing signal lamp in there. That's just a clear part. Paint the inside of it silver, whatever you're going to do. Um, and then you've got your uh, fuel tank going in here. So here's the unarmored fuel tank with all the rivets. There's the armor plating that went over it on the Mark 1A and later, or some of the Mark 1s as well, I believe. Um, it's, the thing is, get those books. If you get this, if you get this book here in particular, or actually, or this one, get that one or that one, or just get them both. They're only 20 quid each. Get them both and they'll give you all the information about exactly what period, um, you know, bits like that were changed over and how many were done and what serial numbers were done and all that. Um, so they're telling you here to drill holes for more detail. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but we'll see that in a minute. Uh, and then you've got the um, the bead sight going on there. Um, and then you've got the exposed 47 gall gallon tank. You can see there the unarmored windscreen. And then here we're fitting the engine cowlings and the door. We've got the door in the closed position. You're going to fill in sand and smooth that bottom bit there. And then we're going to make up our tail planes. So we've got a little piece going in there for the fairing. Um, little piece is showing there how it goes in that part A19. Port elevator detail from late production 616 Squadron Spitfire Mark 1A X4172. Photographed on 26 September 1940. Note the hinge cutout, subtle rib stitching, and lack of scalloping on the tightly doped fabric surface. Oh, I'm so glad he said this because so many manufacturers go over the top with this scalloping of the uh, of the fabric. Um, also note the lack of pre and post post shading effects either side of the ribs and I just happen to have here a border model X-wing that wings um, that's an elevator from an early Lancaster you can see on there it's very very subtle this is correct rather other companies have like plowed, like a plowed field that is you can see the, the, the ribbing tape on there you can see the tightly stretched linen and that is accurate there we go Strange you got that here, isn't it? Um, so here we go, uh, main plane's interior. So we're looking here at the, uh, we're removing the gun heating ducting uh, for version A. I'm just wondering, look at that. I did wonder, it says gun heating ducts only for B and C. So I, was, I, I thought it didn't say anything about that there, but it does, it says only B and C. So we're going to remove that, we're going to remove that fairing there, and then we've got the little fill-in pieces to go in from behind, and then you can just fill and sand. I would use some super glue in there, stick it in with a bit of super glue, sand it nice and smooth, job done, it won't sink. If you use Mr. Surfacer, come back in a week and you'll have a nice line around it. Come back in a year and you'll have a definite line around it. Um, remove hot air out of that fairing. So this is obviously all for the guns. So this is only for version A, this is your early one, okay? So no, we've got A's everywhere. So don't go plowing in unless you're doing the early one. Don't do all this. And then here we've got the main plane's interior. So we've got a main spar going in there, which is really nice. We've got um, guns going in, which is really nice. Now it looks like you take these, yeah, so that you take them off the sprue. So they're molded onto a lump. So you can take them off, hold them, drill them. Okay, and then put them on. So that's very nicely done. 
Here we've got our um, interior bays. So I'm struggling to see this because of the reflection of the light. We've got our interior base here. It's telling us to trim trim something here for the hand pump undercarriage jack. Okay, and then here we've got more with the guns and everything. So this is for this is for version A and B. And then this is for version C. 303 Browning gun barrels inner. Flash eliminators outer. 303 gun and outer. Okay, so these are the inner guns. These are the outer guns. That's what that's all about. Okay, so it's that for A and B and the rest of it is all for C um, as far as guns go. So this is what they're saying. Read the manual carefully, get to understand it. This is the first time I've looked at it. So you can see here it's telling us that on version C, this is going to be black. And on version C, this is going to be white. Um, on the earlier aircraft, they were previously aluminium. So when they painted the bottom black and white, the actual undercarriage bays would have been left aluminium, as would all of the undercarriage itself. I know that from those books. Um, main, uh, main plane's exterior, so we're adding the upper wings. Uh, we're going to drill holes for the Williamson um, camera gun. So, or gun camera, I think I should say. Uh, so there we go. You've got those there, uh, and we can we got the the gun go the the camera gun going in there, or the gun camera. Uh, William seen da, 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 gun camera seen early production. So we have got some. So I'm really struggling to see this, guys. The reflection's terrible. Um, if I if I if I have it so I can see it, you can't see it. So that's how it goes. So we've got the um, Aero Engines Limited made port aileron from early production Spitfire Mark One, almost certainly showing. Almost certainly K9910 showing the fabric stitching details. You can see there it's not all like a ploughed field. And then we're going to add these um, fillets without electrical connector door. So you're going to AB, you're going to remove the cover and then fill in that little panel. Um, and then you're going to have that camera there on the AB version. So you've got a raised camera sticking up the top of the, out of the top of the wing. So obviously that one there. I'm guessing that one there. Remove. Okay, same. Remove it. Sorry, I thought it was saying put it in there. Duh. Okay, so we've got radiators and oil coolers now going underneath. So that's all very nice. And then we got. Um, we're going to add our wing to our main fuselage. Slide rearwards for a good fit. So that's all going on like that. Where are the wing fillets coming? Are they? We fitted those last, didn't we? To the yes, we've got these beautiful wing fillets here. Now, I'm not sure about how to go about this, but there will be plenty of builds. One of them will be Zinzan on YouTube of the Mark 1A kit, which will be the same in this area. So have a look how they've gone about it. They may have decided to put the fuselage onto the wing and then fit them, do all at the same time, fit them to the fuselage. I don't know. We'll have to have a look. Um, I, I really should build one of these because they are such a beautiful little model. I want to get one done. Um, so here we've got our fasteners being um, being shown. And then I'm not sure what that is coming out of there. That's, that's an electrical connector, isn't it? Um, and then we've got undercarriage. So if necessary, cut to improve fit. So that's pretty much like the Airfix Hellcat. You're sliding them into these slots. You just need to trim it just to make it fit nicely. Um, but they need a really good fit. You can see there where they, they slot in. Um, I think Zinzad did them. He put them in before he built the wing. And then afterwards said you probably actually didn't need to. Um, so you can drill out the holes for more detail. This is the sort of thing I like about Qatari. They're telling you these extra little bits and pieces you can do, which is really, really nice. Here you can see there's a black underwing surface and you can see in there the actual undercarriage bay is still silver. OK, so bear that in mind. So we've got the twin, uh, the twin um, fixed Watts wooden propeller there. And then here we've got the de Havilland DH539 spinner and propeller. So that's going to be for your Mark 1A. That's going to be for your Mark 1. OK, so if you want to, I, I mean, you really want to build this as a Mark 1. So it's got the flat canopy unarmored with the um, with the twin bladed prop. Because that's just going to look so different next to every other Spitfire there is. So we've got here, we've got the um, exhaust. So they could be fitted to C, um, but they were definitely fitted to A and B. And then here you've got, they could be fitted to see the later ones. So you can see the difference in design on those. And you can see them here, the difference in the design. So, um, and it's telling you here, cut and drill for more detail. And then we've got the decals going on the bottom of the manifolds. No other kit I know gives you them, but uh, very, very nice indeed. And then we've got here, we've got all the hoods in the closed position. So we've got flat top unarmored. 
raised top armor unarmored and then raised top armored so you know you you can you can see this one unarmored windscreen introduced from k9793 and flat herd unarmored windscreen and raised herd introduced from january 39 and then armored windscreen retrofitted from december 39 and it's got a raised hood so there's no option to have a armored screen with a flat hood okay as far as i can see so there's all your different options there and then there's your door without the the latch it's just got the ring pull which is actually molded on and then we've got some antenna going on here um anti-spin parachute guard which is nice that's part f5 so you've actually got a plastic part in that and then going over the page here we've got our options now so this is the um this is october 38 so before the war even started as you can see we have no um, registration we have a serial number there we have the the aluminium painted undersides and the dark earth and dark green on the top you can see there's a photograph of the actual aircraft there this here is a load of garbage apparently this is a a, a length of um rounds which never happened they went in boxes so this was just a setup for the photographs and then coming over the page here, we've got the um, K9, K9798, uh, May 1939. You can see we've got the yellow and white outer is, is overpainted with camouflage colour. We've got the register, the serial number w, WZL on there now. So this is, um, as I say, May 39. And now you can see we've got the, the black and white undersides, but we've still got the aluminium uh, bays and the ailerons are still painted aluminium as well. So... Um, there we go and then lots of notes here about what the aircraft had and how it was at a certain time how it was after I mean you can build that one as um, before April 39 and it would have had the aluminium underside so there's your choices um, and then going over the page here finally we have the Spitfire Mark 1A PRE um, AN Fury five victories AB Mamadoff HM Goodwin three victories 609 squadron August 1940 so um, you can build that one if you want to. It's telling you the, the yellow tip on the blade has to be three millimetres. And you've got um, all your different decals in there and all your stencils and everything going on. And you can see this has got the sky undersides. And now you see what happened. The Spitfire was painted aluminium. Then they changed them to black and white in the field. And they also changed production aircraft to black and white. So production aircraft had black and white um, undersides out of the factory and then in the field they painted them sky so the undercarriage legs interior doors and the actual wheel bay themselves were normally just left black and white with the rest painted in sky and obviously they painted over all the stencils so there's no stencils right so that's worth remembering so you've got you've got black and white internals with aluminium um inside you've got black and white um sorry black and white undersides with aluminium internals You've got black and white undersides with black and white internals, and then you've got sky undersides with black and white internals, and then you've got sky undersides with sky internals. And obviously you've got aluminium undersides with aluminium internals. So it's, uh, yeah, choose carefully what you're doing. You've got the gas identification patches there, by the look of it. So um, there we go. And then we've got some real photographs here. There's a genuine colour photograph. We've got, unfortunately, there's a crashed one there. So very, very nice indeed. Picking up on all the details that you need. You know, who needs reference material? I'm showing you these books. It's all in here. It's all in here. And here's the team. Uh, this guy here, Mark, he's the main man. He's the owner. And um, he's a practicing veterinary specialist. And he's actually sent his love to Jess and everything. And if you are watching this, Mark, um, she's nearly 11 months into her six-month diagnosis. So she's doing really well. And she's got lumps and bumps on her belly. But uh, she's coming along. That's my dog I'm talking about in case you don't know. Right, so there we go. So that's the instructions. The decal sheet I'm not going to get out because it's sealed and I don't know when I'm going to build this. So I don't want to expose them to the atmosphere. But um, basically they are absolutely stunning. They're designed in New Zealand, printed in Italy by Cartograph. So uh, very, very nice. Car Qatari Models 2023. Um, so obviously this was made late last year. It was sent to me on the 16th of January this year so uh, very very nice indeed and you can see we've got all our different letters here we've got our serial numbers all the the sort of mispainted bits are obviously done really nicely and you can see here's the option to have them with the taped over 
um, um, shell shoots in the bottoms of the wings. So I'm not sure exactly what that's talking about, but if you look in the manual, it'll all be in there exactly why they're telling you to use one or the other. Um, so I can only assume that in the very early day they didn't have any, and then when they did have them, they take them over because they took the guns out or something. I don't know, um, is, is the, the truth. Uh, and then we've got all our different um, roundels and everything here. We've got some other different roundels down here. Surprised to see they don't have the um, the actual painted out bit around the outside. So what you'll have to do if you want to do that, you'll have to put them on and then paint your camouflage after. Um, or make it a bit darker or do something with it. Uh, you've got your fin flashes there, giving you the uh, front and rear directions. We've got our walkways there with all our stenciling. We've got our gun covers there, so we've got the unused gun covers and then here we've got the gun covers with the um with the holes in so they've been used i've seen i don't open this atmosphere there's a hole in the bag anyway duh <laughs> so let's have a look let's see what they're like they're going to be gorgeous i know they are so there we go absolutely beautiful you can see we've got the the uh the fixing markings there for the gun covers on there and you can see how smooth they are <coughs> excuse me slightly glossy um but very very little carrier film and they're going to go down like a dream they're going to be really really nice you have to be very careful with that leg of the p there because it's got some carrier film i don't know if you can see it there there you go you can see the carrier film but that leg's going to want to kick you've got a spare bit there for your um for your gray so that's very nice and then as i say we were looking at all the stencils so you've got your gas patches you've got your head armor there um you got another piece there for your armor plate someone was asking me if fighters had it and i was like do you know i don't know it's a question i would never thought of um and then here we've got all our stenciling and placards everything guys is in the box you don't need anything to build a beautiful model from this kit so there we go very very nice indeed i want to say a massive thank you to richard for sending me this very very good of him indeed Okay, and they were actually in the bottom of the box with the instructions on top. So thank you very much for that as well. Um, in fact, I've just put them on the bottom of the box below the instructions. Right, so let's have some of these clear parts first. We'll see how nice they are. So, well, they're beautifully polished. The mould has been beautifully polished and the parts are particularly clear. We've got bit of sprue there which is hanging around which I don't want on there um yeah we also I also noticed there was a piece there we go be careful of putting clear parts back in the bag you've got bits rolling around because they will scratch so you can see here's the panel that goes in behind the cockpit it's basically that piece there and here's the this is your mark 1a stuff now so there's your raised lid with armor plate you've got your raised lid with armor plate in the open position and then here you've got your raised lid without armor plate and then you've got your flat lid without armor plate and then you've got your flat lid without armor plate open so i'm guessing we don't have, oh we do sorry we have yeah we have the option to have the raised lid without armor plate open using that piece and that piece non-raised lid without armor plate open is that piece and that piece and then those two pieces for the closed all right, it looks weird that windscreen, doesn't it, without any armor plate? And we're so used to seeing this, this big sort of triangular section sticking down onto the cowling. Without it, it looks strange, doesn't it? So get the light back on now. But they are beautifully made, and they are very, very clear. If we um, if we put that on top of there, you can see through, and little to no distortion just looking at the the flat one it should be even better yeah really really nice so um 10 out of 10 for clear parts Katari well done beautiful be careful not to touch them be careful not to scratch them and always make sure you put them straight back in the bag and make sure you seal the bag up as well not seal it up but just tape over the end so they can't slide out and get scratched if you put in your box into the stash There we go. So that's gone like that. I'm just going to grab a piece of tape. As I say, I'm sorry for making you wait a few seconds. 
I'm going to do that straight away so that they don't come out. There we go. They can go over there. Right, let's start running at some plastic. So, this is our first sprue, which is handily at sprue A. And nice soft bags as well, not the hard, hard ones with the resealable edges. So, sprue A, you can see here, let's get it the right way up. It's going to need a wash. I can feel a little bit of something on there. So, yeah, it's always best to wash your sprues anyway, guys, as I've already told you. Um, so, we have our bulkheads here that go in the cockpit. And this is where they're saying you can drill through these holes and make it look more realistic if you want to. But um, people are saying it's very difficult to do. I can't see what's difficult to do about that. I mean, obviously these here, they've got cables or whatever on the back of them. But, uh, you know, you could just not drill them and just put some black in them. But um, all the way around here, I can't see what the issue would be with drilling them. Be absolutely fine. Um, what's it like with the light out? That's better, isn't it? So there we go. Very nice indeed. And then we can see here we've got the um, one of the tri-bladed propellers. We've got some exhaust there for the Mark 1A. We've got flare chutes, undercarriage bays, wheels. We've got lettering on the tyres. We've got flat tyres. So um, flatted tyres. Obviously the spinner, undercarriage legs radiator we've got the later door there you can see it's got the latch on the top there it's got the latch and you can see here under carriage doors it's also worth noting there's i mean there is a tiny bit there very little sinkage um which is nice to see and we have no silly ejector pin marks you can see here the ejector pin marks are on the surfaces that are glued to the wing and then those two inside are actually behind the radiators they're not going to be seen um, obviously the ejector pin marks are on the insides, the ejector pins here are on the backs. Um, in fact, on the ones that are going to be seen, they have no ejector pins. They've got these tabs on them, so that's really nice. Got two different types of antenna there. Got an intake for a carburetor. Got some guns there. I'm imagining that's part of the, um, for the spinner, or for the propeller, should I say. Lots of lovely little bits and pieces on there, you can see. That's basically the same sprue as you get in the Mark 1 kit, Mark 1A kit, so nothing new there. But uh, if you haven't seen the review of the Mark 1A kit, then it's totally new to you. And then here we have our next sprue with our fuselage halves. So this is sprue E. Okay, so you can see here on there you have the raised riveting. Now, Spitfire... Mark 1s, Mark 1As had raised rivets on the rear of the fuselage, sort of from the cockpit back, which have been depicted. They had overlapping panels, which have been depicted. Um, and then on the wings and the tailplanes, they, had, they were flush riveted and then filled and sanded smooth for maximum performance, uh, much like on the P-51s. So manufacturers will give us lovely panel lines and in the case of Revell, really heavy panel lines and loads of rivet you know sunken rivet detail and everything which looks great when a wash is on it and everything but it's totally and utterly inaccurate so um what Qatari have done here is gone down the the accuracy route rather than the the what modelers want route so you can see on this spine you have all this beautiful raised detail that's all raised riveting and all the way along the edge, you've got to be really careful with this panel when you fit it. Get it in place, clamp it. Don't get tape around the edge of it. Clamp it in place. Get it so it's held in position. You're 100%. You're sure where it's going to go. And then just get some extra thin in there just to hold it in position. Because you've got riveting all the way along that edge. You've got no riveting on that edge. But um, if you watch Zin Zan's channel, as I say, he built this. Um, go take a look. He did a lovely job of it. And... Um, Really, really nice, and and but he actually misplaced this panel. He had to completely remove it, and um, did a lovely job of doing so. But uh, he just shows you how easy it is to get it wrong. Got the cockpit floor there, and as you can see, we've got all the beautiful detail in there. I would be tempted to draw those holes out, make them a bit deeper. We've got the fuel tank guard there, which you're not going to use if you do an early one. And here you can see tail planes, no rivet detail whatsoever because. They were filled and they were smooth. This is how they were. 
don't compare this to your Mark 9 Tamiya, okay, because it's not a Mark 9, it's a Mark 1. Um, but, you know, just, just make sure that you don't, don't compare this to anything else. Don't compare it to any restored aircraft. Just compare it to actual genuine pictures like you get in these books and you get in the instruction manual. And you won't go far wrong. So here we've got the trimmed side panels. So these are going to be slightly shorter than the ones you're going to use if you're doing a Mark 1. And uh, very, very nice indeed. I forgot to show you interior detail. Again, we have no ejector pin marks around anywhere that's going to be seen. Obviously down here in this lower area, that's going to have a panel inside it. So that's going to be all covered, but here at the top where it's all detailed, it's on show. There are no ejector pin marks whatsoever, so um, really nice. Also worth notice, we've got a one-piece rudder. And something else to note, something I have a real bugbear with. A lot of kits these days, they come with a lovely separate rudder, but there's absolutely no attachment point. you just got literally a, you know, or, or it's like that really, and they just get broken off really easily. So very nice they've done that. And if you notice on here, there is a slight turn to well, there's a slight turn to the right, slight turn to starboard on that rudder. If you look at that, that fixing tab there, you can see it's not straightforward. It's slightly to the right. Bear that in mind. And if you look on the um, elevators, they are slightly down, I believe. I, th I believe that's the top. I believe they are slightly down. And you can see the trim tabs there, or they might not be. They might be servos. Um, they are actually just up, so they could be servos there. Um, and basically what they did, they this end of this rod was attached to a fixed point so that when you put the elevator down, because remember there was no hydraulics, it was all just cables. So when you put the elevator down, that spoiler came up and helped the pilot push the elevator down. So there you go. And the same vice versa when you went up. The Lancasters had it on their ailerons on the wings. So, um, yeah. That's why I call them servos. It's probably not the correct name, but that's what I call them. So there we go. Um, here we have our main wing sprue. So once again, beautiful molded sprue. Um, having not built a Qatari kit, I don't know what the plastic's like, but I should imagine it's the same as wing nut wings. Looking at this, it kind of looks like they're probably using the same tool manufacturer um, because they've got the very similar sort of size labels on here um, and the plastic looks the same although it does it does feel yeah it's this definitely needs wash you can feel the um the oil on there in fact you can see it here you can see the oil on there so they've obviously used um release agent so make sure you give your parts a good wash so you can see on here again with the wings totally smooth Okay, absolutely totally smooth where it's all been filled, but there's some undulation there. Okay, and that's not just from the molding, it's just got this slight amount of undulation there. That's not from the molding, it's not from the pieces behind. There is, you can see like here, there's a, it's like a, an undercut in it there. Um, that there is not shrinkage, that's a shadow. That's because it's so thin behind me. There's a recess there for the uh, bay to go in. That's what's caused that. Um, but they do have this kind of beautiful effect. You've got the, the bolted in or the fixed in Zeus fasteners panels there. And they're all uneven, which is correct. Like this, this side feels smoother than that side. And that one there in particular is sticking out more than the others, I think. And then if you look on here, I'm not sure if you'll be able to pick this out. But this is something I've never seen on a kit before, but it's absolutely stunning. These panels here, if you can imagine, if you've got a thin panel and you've got it held in tight with fasteners, you get distortion. And if you look at those panels there, if I can get them in the light, you can see the distortion is molded in. So it's like it's a thin aluminium plate and it's been pulled in tight with the fasteners, screws, whatever they are. And it's pulled them in tight and it's distorted the the sheet metal. Hopefully you can see that. Very, very nice indeed. 
So, um, hmm, it's more of those guns there. And then here we have our ailerons. Again, one piece, it's beautifully done. A little bit of shrinkage in there where you've got the thick section. Um, but, you know, as they're fabric, I think you'll get away with that. It'd be very difficult to repair. But, um, as I say, they're fabric. And also, they, they fit into there, so that bit of shrinkage is actually going to be hidden because that bit of shrinkage there, which is going along here, which is going along there, is going to be hidden by that piece there. Okay, so in fact, no, it's not because that's the bottom, so you will actually see that bit of shrinkage. But I don't think once it's painted, I don't think it's going to notice. It's, it's very slight. It's, it's practically unavoidable when you've got these thick sections. Um, and it's kind of, you know, take your choice. Do you want nice thin edges where you don't have to worry about gluing halves together? Or are you prepared to put up with a little bit of shrinkage? If you want that without shrinkage, they would have to really pack the tool and leave it in the tool to cure for a long time to prevent the shrinkage. Um, and even then you would probably still get some because it's so thick. It's so thick there compared to the trail edge. It's the, the differential, the differential between the cooling between the two areas is going to be massive. But yeah, very very nicely done, and I love the way they've done this. So you can get the fastener detail along that edge and along that edge, which is correct. That's why they've moulded them separately. If you remember, the Airfix one is missing all the detail there because they've moulded it with the fuselage and they haven't slide moulded it. So. Um, very clever bit of engineering, which is, this is why Qatari won my number one 2023 for engineering. Uh, we have a, this is our B sprue now, so I think this is the last now of the, this is the last of the standard Mark 1A kit. So, again, this is, this is all the standard kit parts. We've got the, the, the fuselage sides, as I showed you before, all moulded in one, beautifully done. You have the seats there with and without straps. Notice no flare shoots across the front of the seat, not yet. This is early days. Um, and then we've got the bulkhead there. And then we've got the early instrument panel. We have the seat supports here. Um, we've got the trimmed engine cowling there, so we're not going to use that one. We've got one of the three bladed propellers here, so there's one of them we're not going to use, but if you're doing the Mark 1, you're not going to use any of them. Oil cooler. Spinner there for that prop. Rudder pedals. You can see how thin they are. You can nearly see through them. They're beautifully moulded. Very nicely done indeed. And then you've got here, we've got some bits and pieces. And when you see stuff like this, these are the gates. So, so this is basically um, a hexagonal hole in the tool, if you like, that allows plastic to pass through. So obviously when that gate is turned 90 degrees it won't allow the plastic to pass through so it won't make this part here and the same here it won't make that part there um, so obviously with the I'm guessing with the mark 5 they'll change those over and you you know it's, it's this is this is very clever tool manufacturer won't manufacture it, but here they've just left all the gates open so except for that one that one didn't get left open so that one's actually moulded through there, but there's no short shot, so all good. But beautifully done. And uh, you can see all the rivet detail in there. When you get a wash on that, it's all going to really, really pop. Again, I drill those holes out there, make them deeper. So it looks hollow because it's actually a hollow sort of C-section. Or top part section. So yeah, very, very nice indeed. We've got panels here that are going to fit into the sides of the fuselage. And like I said, they're purposely made to not fit perfectly because they shouldn't fit perfectly. Um, I just wanted to look at something else a minute as well. We've got this bag here. And this is another good sign of a good manufacturer when you do stuff like this rather than just send out a load of rubbish and hopefully you don't notice or you'll just come back to us. But here we have a, a little slip of paper. If somebody's got the lovely job of cutting these out. 
So please use this replacement part B6 to substitute for the slightly mismolded part in the kit sets from the original production run. We apologize for any inconvenience this might have caused. Now I'm not saying if these are incorrectly molded um, for an early Spitfire or if there's actually some short shots on here but I'm sort of looking at these parts and I can't initially see any difference. So I can only assume they've had some issues with the moulding of these parts here. These are the seat, sides of the seats. So I can only assume they've had some problems with them. So rather than go through and check every one, they've just put this extra piece in. You can see it's a darker coloured plastic. So um, maybe they've had some short shot issues. So they've basically put this in just to make sure that everybody's 100% satisfied rather than have someone judge what's good and what's bad they just replace them so you can be the judge now you can see there if you look at that ejector tab i'm pointing out there you can see that's a round ball this one here is an even smaller round ball that should be like that so they've obviously got fill issues with this part of the tool so um there you go you can see on this one it's a uh, it's not a fully formed ejector tab like that one is but it's bigger than what that one is so it's just an insurance policy that's all and um, they've obviously inspected these and as long as they can see an ejector tab there they know it's okay or a form of ejector tab so that's what that's for that's customer care for you that's brilliant really really good so the final sprue some of you will be pleased to know so you can go and make a cup of tea or something um or if you're just plain fed up with hearing my voice so this is the sprue that makes this kit the mark one over the mark 1a um so we've got a mark one early the last kit was a mark 1a mid so we've got the earlier instrument panel here we have the door and you can see on the bottom there on the bottom of the door as you look at it it's got the um the ring pour system so you've got the ring molded on you might decide to cut that off and replace it with a piece of wire or whatever i don't know but there you've got the ring door that's in the closed position that's in the open okay so early exhaust here these are these little pieces to make the, when you sand away the um the ducts in the wing you put those in and fill them in with them afterwards i'm not quite sure what the rang, rang bit is for but um it's there anyway maybe it fits over a pin or something i don't know the camera there that's the early um it'd be interesting to have that on there actually because people are saying what's that and it's a camera no they were in the wing nope there it is so um here we've got the untrimmed engine covers engine cowlings so these are going to be slightly longer than the originals and then there's the unarmored fuel tank so you can see whereas you normally see that big smooth panel in front of the pilot you've got this panel here with all the rivets in because that's the fuel tank which obviously left exposed to the atmosphere wasn't a good idea when you got a 109 chasing you down you got the beautiful um it looks like an underwing pitot tube or something there but we do have the twin pitot tube here which is typical of the mark one early and there's that um, parachute guard that goes around the fin beautifully molded that is isn't it wow that'd be so easy to short shot um got some very very slender little parts here there's a gun sight with a gun aimer ring and then we have the spine. Be really careful when you're holding this, guys. That'll snap off really easily. You've got the um, the spine, not the spine, the spine uh, here with the raised rivets. You can see those raised rivets on there. Really, really gorgeous. Just you know, a very, very light dry brushing with something after you've done the model. Just something, maybe a slight semi gloss or just a, a very, very light metallic. Not you know, just to sort of make them just pop make them so you know I'm here and then very clever design here interesting way of doing a two a two bladed prop be interesting to see how that works out actually that's very nice that's a wooden pot remember so don't go chipping it with steel or with aluminium should I say but uh yeah very nice indeed no sinkage in that prop at all that is a very beautifully made sprue where an awful lot could have gone very very wrong I mean you've got short shot city there also notice what Qatari have done 
you'll notice a lot of manufacturers will have a sprue connector there and a sprue connector there. The reason Qatari haven't done that is because if you have one here and one here, the plastic rushes along, rushes along, goes up there, goes up there and then meets here and that's where you get your cold front and that's why you find on some of your kits where you find you've got a long part and it's held on with three, four, five, whatever, it just falls apart in your hands, it just snaps really easily and that's why that's not doing that, it's because it's made, it's one lot of plastic. I was surprised they didn't have a little ejector tab on the end um, so that you know it, the, the plastic could flow through the part into something. But um, yeah, that is really, really nice. That is a beautifully made sprue by, it's been um, done by somebody who really knows what they're doing there. Really nice indeed, very nice. So there we go, guys. So that is, I'll show you the box front again. That is the Qatari Spitfire Mark I Early. Supermarine Spitfire Type 300 Spitfire Mark I Early Production. And that is the version I would do, I think. Flat canopy, unarmoured, two blade propeller. Um, it's got a three blade propeller on it. Looks like it's got a three blade propeller on it, doesn't it? Hmm. No, it's a two blade propeller. It's just the angle of the. Yeah, it's it's a two blade propeller. I was thinking the blade there, blade there, blade there. But um, that looks very nice. This this one here looks very nice as well. But it's got that funny roundel on the side, which doesn't quite look right. This has got no registration codes on it. It's got a great big nineteen on the tail. It's totally sort of. It's obviously a Spitfire, but there's nothing there that's, that sort of shouts World War II Spitfire because it's October 38. It's um, very nice indeed. I didn't show you this side of the box, did I? We've got uh, English, French, uh, Italian, German, Japanese and Spanish. There we go. So there we are. So if you want to know more about it, go to there, KatariModels.com. And you can find out more about what you want. The kit number is 32004. Currently available in Hannans for, I think it's 89.99. Um, have a look round. I'm sure you'll see people with deals and everything. But just make sure you check the postage. Because uh, a lot of these companies will advertise a kit for 79.99. And they charge you £10 postage. Whereas some of the companies will do it for 84.99 with free postage. So just be careful. So anyway, have a look around, go and get yourself one. As I say, it's a it's a great kit because it's not difficult to build. It's extremely accurate, it's extremely well detailed. And I mean, the instructions are just, you know, keep them for reference for future builds because they're absolutely gorgeous. This kit has got a lot of features in it that have never been available before. Um, obviously you could get a Spitfire Mark One. I. I think Hasegawa, wasn't it? Hasegawa did one? I'm sure you can tell me in the comments below, but um, this is uh, this is just really, really nice, and um, I think I'm going to build it. I think I am. I've got the Mark 1A min, and I've got loads of extras to go with it that have been kindly sent to me from people, but um, I really do like the look of this. With the, with the, It just looks different, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling and let you go on with your lives. So I'll see you all soon. Thank you for watching, and um, I'll have another product review for you coming very soon. And uh, hopefully, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, Qatari will send me, send me their Mark V when it comes out. And their 109 as well. That would be nice to see. So, um, anyway, I'll see you all soon. Bye for now, guys.